Today, we're going to do another retrofit, but this time, we're changing these bad boys. We're gonna go from Xenon to LED. So this retrofit, we're gonna be doing a lot of wiring, we're going to do a lot of different things, but we're gonna go through some prerequisites first, because it seems a bit of a lengthy process, and you're gonna to need to know these things if you're gonna do this conversion. The first thing you're gonna need is a power control module. Uh, this particular type has the LIN bus uh, pin on it. Some of the uh, onboard power control modules don't have them. My car specifically doesn't have a power control module with a LIN bus on it. So, I bought a new one and we need to remove component protection. Secondly, what else you'll need to note is that when you do get these headlights, you'll need to make sure that they contain more than just one control module. So, you'll need to make sure that it has the control module at the back. You'll need to make sure that it has the control module on the inside here, just there. And on the right side there are two more control modules, LED power modules. Uh, and on the American version there will be one in the middle. You'll also know that uh, you have an American headlight because the um, on the left side where the indicator would be, that is, there is an orange plate there. There is a fan right here. You'll need to make sure that that is in there too. The headlights that have been sold on the internet don't come with the, these modules inside and a lot of problems do occur if you do not have this fan inside. So make sure you check your headlights when they arrive. You'll also need to make sure that this rubber seal is on here as well because underneath is a filter and this will make sure that the air inside the headlight is filtered and doesn't mess up the lenses inside. So make sure you check that too. Okay, so now we can get on with the work, but first we need to load VCDS so that we can get the code for the power control module so that uh, once we've installed the new control module, we can put the code back into its original state. So first, Go into control modules and 09 central electronics once you've opened that we just wait for it to load a little bit uh, we go to coding and in here we just basically take the current coding we copy it and we paste it straight into our notepad there is a drop down menu for other control modules, so just make sure to make a copy of those, although it turns out we actually don't need them, but it's just good practice to make a copy of all of those codes, just in case anything happens, we need to replace anything else further along the line, but that shouldn't be the case. So now we're finished, we can close this and install the new control module. Okay, so the first thing we want to do on this retrofit is we want to replace the onboard power supply module or power control module uh, and to do that we go to the driver's side we pop off the cover from the dashboard here there's two 8mm bolts from this side and two underneath as well each side once we've done that we can simply just Gently pop this down and maneuver it out of the way. Okay, so underneath the dashboard on the left side, there is these uh, connectors here, and just behind that is the module that we need. So to get to it, there's a clip right here. We'll just press that in, and this just kind of hooks out like that. And then we have good access to the module. We can just unclip that, unclip up all the other necessary components and we can plug in the new one. Okay, so here are my two control modules. Basically what you want to look out for is that your new control module has the same amount of pins in the same positions as yours, if not more pins. If that's the case, then you're good to go. If you have less pins, then you might be in trouble. Okay, so the new control module is in. This only took a matter of about five minutes to do. So now we need to connect the computer and reprogram it. Okay, so now we've fitted our new control module. We load up VCDS again 
and we go back into 09 central electronics control module which is the power control module and once it's loaded we can see there that it's working that's great and that it's the new control module uh, we go into coding and we can basically I mean we can look around and play here but it doesn't matter because all we need to do is copy our old code from our old control module and paste it straight into this white box here and we can click do it we don't need to worry about the old code in the new control module we don't need it as uh, from a different vehicle so whatever we click ok done and straight into the fault codes option here we will see that there's lots of fault codes but we don't need to worry about them right now we can clear them but some faults have popped up one of them is component protection which i'll talk about shortly in a second but further down you'll obviously see uh, some other bits like the light switch okay i mean the dashboard is still in pieces right now so we don't need to worry about that but in terms of component protection we won't be able to remove that right now i do have some software that can do it but i mean i'm not going to talk about that right now so yeah we go into the other control modules um, in that drop down menu as i mentioned earlier just to make sure that the coding is correct and everything's fine we don't need to worry about that so we can close everything and we're done so now i'm going to start with the left headlight um, we're going to take it out and we're going to compare the connections behind the xenon and behind the led light so this is a side by side comparison of the headlights together we have the xenon on the left and the led on the right um, and we can obviously notice that there are a lot of missing pins on the led uh, basically they're not necessary anymore um, purely and simply because uh, like for example pins one two three and four they are for the movement of the reflector in the xenon light but yeah i mean led the headlight doesn't have a moving reflector um it it doesn't adapt in any way so those aren't necessary anymore um pin a on the xenon is missing but it's needed for the led and this is because on pin eight this is for the high beam um it's missing on the xenon because uh, high beam is um, made with the reflector um actuator there's an actuator inside the reflector um, so this obviously is uh, on a different pin um, and also pin 14 on the Xenon is missing but it's necessary for the LED light um, and pin 14 is basically for the LIN bus which I'll talk later of in the video about uh, pin 11 is used on the Xenon headlight um, but isn't used on the LED so we have a lot of vacant pins that will be available to us that we can repurpose um, but in my case basically all I did was just rewire or well I added some wires and I repurposed uh, one wire of course you'll have to do this for both sides of the of the car so yeah the only wire that I actually added uh, was pin 8 because that was not there at all and I couldn't reuse any of the other wires because this is obviously a, a high a high current uh, cable that was needed um, as you can see the the pin is a, a lot bigger than uh, the ones that are uh, on the other either side of those six pins there so yeah I had to buy a wire and rewire this so I had to do this for both sides other things worthy of note is that uh, even though the pins come all do different things on the xenon light compared to the led the good thing is is that we can reprogram the power control module uh, which will basically change all of the configuration of those pins in order for them to work with the led light um, so we don't actually need to change many wires in any way at all we just need to add wires so next i'm going to show you the wiring diagrams you can take some screenshots or whatever of these then you can use them for your own purposes and do this for yourself
All right, guys, so good news. I was able to keep all of my wiring for my headlights. The only thing that I had to do was the high beams. And for that, I had to buy some wire uh, and I'm routing it through. On this side, I'm routing it through, up through the cowling and I have to take out the ECU. A word of caution, there are two 10 mil nuts on the top of these uh, threaded heads here and uh, they are not tight at all. They are about one newton meter and that's for a very good reason and that's because they are welded into a aluminium body uh, and so if you tighten them any more than one newton meter you will pull the threads completely out. Um, fortunately I haven't done this, I have experienced it before so just a word of warning, if you're going to do this you need to take out the ECU um, yeah, just be very careful about that. And down at the back, there is an entrance into the dashboard from the other side where I will put them into the uh, power control module. Uh, just to let you know that the Lin bus, uh, they, are, the, the, they are joined. They are joined wires. So from left and right headlights, uh, they can be joined together uh, and then they can go straight into pin one of this connector right here, the brown one. Yes, you can see there's some cut wires um, and that's okay. They are unused now that the LED lights are in. To wire the headlights, you can pull this cover down here and you can see this, this entrance there and you can see my my blade that I've just pushed through to make a hole so that I can put the wire through for the headlights for the high beam. So once you've done all your wiring you want to head to the back of the car because there is one more thing that you have to do especially if you have AFS headlights. Uh, you will need to pull the board that is at the back of the boot down and behind there you will see a huge box of fuses uh, another control module, uh, well a few other control modules and you'll see circled here is the AFS headlight control module. You will need to unplug that otherwise you will get some warnings so just remove that. So I didn't get around to recording this part because partly because I forgot but also I was busy with the coding of the LED lights. Um, this was probably the most time consuming part purely and simply because there were a couple of settings that I needed uh, that were necessary for the LED lights to work because um, yeah, without some of the settings uh, the fan wouldn't work or the indicators wouldn't work or the high beam or whatever something just didn't work right um, and sometimes I got errors and whatever um, so it took me a while to figure out what I wanted and what I needed um, so now I've finished the code, what I'll do is I'll put the code in the description of the video below. You can copy this code and it should work for you. Um, basically, this code will allow for the fan to work in the, in the headlight. This is obviously necessary. Um, it will allow for um, dimming daytime running lights. Um, it will allow for the daytime running light to be on while indicating. Um, I could make a short video for, for those that are really interested in what the headlights will look like once they are completely installed, um, what they, they do when you do certain things. Um, yeah, but I will post the code below. Also, when you do access the control module, you will notice that there are two additional control modules that the uh, power module did find, um, and they are the control modules for the headlights themselves. Now you will need to probably program those as well. Um, I will leave the code in the description below the video for that too. Those I am certain of that you will need those to be programmed in the way that I will provide the code. So just enter that code and everything will be fine. All right guys, so the lights are in, they've been adjusted and we're ready to do a test drive. But guys, I already turned the lights on obviously and they are absolutely phenomenal. So now I've just got the DRLs on. So let me just turn on the main lights now. Look at how bright that is and the field of view is fantastic. So 
let's go for a test drive and see how they perform. lights are so bright now the floor is like daylight and uh, yeah if I put my high beams on then naturally they are much much far reaching I don't want to blind that guy in front there but yeah the lights the lights are fantastic LED lights on this now are unbelievable and uh, if I turn the fog lights on I have range right over to the side here both sides fantastic high beams on great so if you haven't done this mod guys when I say mod, if you haven't done this retrofit, I highly suggest that you do. Uh, it's really worth it. Unfortunately, they aren't uh, panning um, or tilting lights, but the range is pretty damn good in any case anyway. So anyway, I hope the video is informal, guys, and uh, yeah, I'll catch you on the next one.